And the great need in America tonight, I'm convinced of this, as good as Bible schools are without assembly lines and producing their preachers, the greatest need in America tonight is profit. The greatest need in America tonight is profit. The greatest need in America tonight is profit. I speak unto thee this day, and I say that if you will indeed receive instruction, then you can be made wise. But I say when you are vainly puffed up in pride, imagining you know so much more than you know, then I say you will resist and resent instruction, not wanting to partake of the same. But I say it is me, the living God, who will direct, correct, and guide forth the people who will pay heed to me. But I say that the ones who are wise in their own conceit, I say they will go in the way of fools and likewise be beaten with many stripes. And I say there are many who go in the way of fools never to return to me. Now I say this day that I the living God to see the condition of men at this time, and yes, there are plenty of fools. That is, the ones who are wise in their own conceit, not truly repentant nor subject unto me, but ever wanting their own way. But I say the truth of it is they are dull and dumb when it comes to the things of my spirit, for they realize not that their own way is simply a trap, a snare, an entanglement to cause them to lose their souls and end in hell. But I say that the way that I the living God do give is the way of understanding, and those who pay heed to me are guided always. Now I say this day when I the living God do give the call to all men to repent, and they will indeed obey me, then they are brought forth by me. And yes, they are given the newness of life, they are given the truth and the mercy of who I am. For I say it is a privilege to be ever guided, directed, and corrected by me. And I say it is a privilege that few receive in this generation because they want their way. Now I say this day when men take up the worship of the God of self, of course the most important thing to them will be their selves. That is, they will glorify self, they will magnify self, they will exalt self, and want others to do the same. But I say that the end of the exaltation, the worship, the adoration of the God of self, is nothing but damnation of soul. For I say, when a man will be serving the God of self, exalting the same, he is not serving me. Now I say this day that I do not think God do not call you to be dull and dumb and non-alert in the spirit, but I say that I call you to walk uprightly in me. And I say that I call you to stay alert to the still, small voice that I give you that would warn you away from fools. For I say that fools in their folly are always trying to gravitate others unto the same deception that they are in. And I say they are taken in a way that is stupidity and darkness because they want their own way. Now I say this day there's a way that seems right unto a man, but that way will prove to be his destruction because he is far from me. I say this day when you hear the braggarts, when you see the proud fools, when you see the ones who are ever calling attention unto themselves, know they are failing to be crucified in their own carnality. That is, they are failing to allow themselves to die out that I may come forth in them. For I say when a man is ever seeking to call attention to himself, know that he's loving himself. And I say when a man will want to have others to follow him rather than follow me, I say such a man is a fool, for I say it is me, the living God, who intends that men would learn to live with me, to love me, and to serve me. For I say that my people are meant to be knowing me as I am, and living in the light that I provide. And I say that my people are meant to continue in repentance before me, dying out to the old way, the old nature not promoting the same. But I say, when any man is glorifying himself, he is glorifying a fool. I say this day that I, the living God, do not call my people to serve a multitude of other gods, other lovers, including the God of self. Yet I say, because many are so dull, so dumb in this wicked generation, I say they easily fall prey to the God of self and think they must be serving the same. That is, they think they must bow to self, they must exalt self, they must get others to think how great they are. But I say that the truth of it is that men in their carnal state are altogether fools. Now I say this day that I have been God to call you to serve me, to love me, and obey me each and every day. And I say that I call you to be faithful, to repent when my spirit would show you that you are indeed a fool in the flesh. That is, do not be defending pride, do not be defending exaltation, exaltation of self, but I say be defending me. 
For I say it is me, the living God, and me alone you are meant to serve. I say this day you have many who think they must talk their way to success, or so they esteem. But I say they are full of empty words. For I say they are full of bragging, they are full of wagging their tongues. And I say they are full of hot air. For I say when it is finished and the end is there, what is the salvation of it all? I say they are desolate of soul, they are destitute, because they love the God of self more than me. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not call you to bow to proud men, nor do I call you to learn from them, except to take note that the way of fools is treacherous, and yes, they will end in a ditch. But I say that I call you to walk humbly before me each and every day, seeking to fulfill my desire for you. For I say there are many who can do great religious works, or so they esteem, but I say it is all to glorify self. I say there are some who will make great sacrifices and speak great swelling words, but I say that the end motive is to glorify self. I say there are others whose heads puff up with their so-called knowledge until they can barely carry the weight of the same. But I say if they are refusing to know me, to walk humbly in me, to be repentant unto me, then I say that all of their knowledge is mere vanity, a puff of wind. And I say for all of the hot air that they fill themselves upon, I say they are dissipated fools. Now I say this day that I the living God to call you to walk circumspectly before me, and I say that I call you to seek me in all things. That is, do not take a man at face value if your heart is not right with me. That is, in the sense that you are ever putting all things before me to receive my truth, my counsel, my light upon the same. For I say, when you walk in subjectivity unto me, then you are guided forth in my way. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do delight when my people will keep on believing, keep on receiving, and keep on following me. And I say that I find my joy in a people who believe upon me, trust in me, and are ever guided forth by me. For I say it is a privilege to be receiving of what it is that I give you time and again. And I say it is a privilege to be directed, corrected, and guided each day by me. Now I say, therefore, this day, let it be me that you continue to look to, that you continue to believe, to trust, and obey. For I say, it is me, the living God, who is the way of righteousness and truth, mercy, and hope, and peace provided. And it is me, the living God, who will ever direct, correct, and instruct the people who will pay heed to me. For I say, if it is me that you keep your focus, your vision upon, then you are brought forth in the truth, the light that I provide. And yes, you are given tender mercy, for it is me, the living God, who is present to give you the same. I say this day that I, the living God, do see the wretched state that men are in because of pride, because of worship of the God of self, because they will not die out to who and what they are. And I say that the wretchedness that men are in is going to be their own destruction, their own damnation. That is, if they will not repent, return to me and walk uprightly in me. For I say, for a man to truly be mine, he must change his ways. That is, he must turn from pride in all of its subtleties to turn to the humility that is found in me. Now I say, this day when you see what it is that lures you away from me, I say, mark the same as the enemy of your soul. For I say, you are not meant to be enticed, nor lured away, nor taken in that which is foolery, vanity, and vexation. But I say, you are meant to keep steadily following me, the one true God who is able. And I say you are men to be thankful that indeed you are purposed, directed, and brought forth by me. Now I say, therefore, this day, be glad for the privilege to look unto me, to believe me, and trust me each and every day. And I say, be thankful that I will give unto you the truth, the light, and the mercy of who I am. And I say, be thankful that through me so are you guided, directed, and corrected each day. And I say, be thankful that through me you are given the light upon the path. Now I say this day that I, the living God, have intended that my own people would walk in me, would believe in me, would trust always in me. And I say that I have intended that the ones who serve me would do so with gladness and rejoicing each and every day. For I say, when you look upon what it is that I've set before thee, I say it is the way of my truth, my light, and my mercy provided for thee. And I say, if you will be a partaker of all that I offer and provide, then of course you are directed by me. Now I say this day that I, the living God, am giving the call to any and all that will serve me, obey me, and be brought forth in me, that they would hear and obey. That is, that they could be brought forth in the blessedness, the truth, and the light of who I am each and every day. 
For I say, when you look upon the way that I offer the humility way of my life, and you see that I desire a people who are continuing to repent before me, I say, are you too good for the same? That is, must you have it your way, must you prove you are right, all to the damnation of your soul. I say, there are many who are stubborn against me, I say, they are willful and proud, and yes, they will have their way. For I say, when any man or woman makes up their minds that it is themselves that they love more than me, they are headed to their own destruction. But I say, when any will abandon their way to take up my way and continue in the same, then I say, they are headed in the way of life. That is, the life eternal that is only to be found through me. Now I say, this day that I will have been God am giving the call to any and all who will hear and obey the call to repent. And I say, when a man will truly enter into repentance, revolution, I say that he will see that the same must be his way of life. That is, that he is continually having to deal with the old nature and put the same underfoot and repent and keep his heart right before me. For I say, when men are smug and proud and arrogant in the flesh, then I say that the same will attempt to kill their spirit life in me. Now I say, this day be thankful that I give to you the truth, the light, the mercy, and the hope of who I am. And I say, be thankful that it is me that you can continue to look unto and believe. And I say, be thankful that you can be brought forth in that which I give, which is the truth, the light, and the mercy day by day. For I say, it is me, the living God, who is the way of all righteousness, the way of all truth, and the way that is mercy provided. Now I say, therefore, this day, let it be me that you continue to look to, that you will continue to trust each day. For I say, it is me, the living God, alone of all the gods who is able. Therefore, I say, keep believing in me. That is, do not get lured away from what it is that I've called you unto. Do not be seduced and enticed and taken in by men who give forth their braggadocious fields. But I say, instead, be subjecting yourselves in humility to the mind of my spirit, seeking to obey the same. For I say, you are living in a time when proud boasters are on every hand exalting themselves, declaring how great they are. And I say, they come in many disguises, wearing cloaks that will cover up the wretchedness of what they are. For I say, they will not be subject to me, nor walk in what it is that I ordain, but I say, they want their own way. And I say, what they want most of all is to be worshipped and adored, and followed after that they can be considered as gods. Now I say, if you really consider how stupid that is, how dumb they are in all of their conceit, I say, have no part of the same. But I say, continue to submit yourself to me, and be ever subject to my way. For I say that a man may have a great scheme, a great plot, a great show, or so it appears, but I say that if he's not near unto me, it is all in vain. For I say that he's merely promoting self in its many disguises and wanting others to worship the same. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not call you to follow proud boasters. I do not call you to follow religious nuts. I do not call you to follow those who think they know it all. But I say that I call you to follow me, the author and the finisher of thy faith. And I say that I call you to be thankful that you can indeed be in subjectivity unto me and thankful for my way. For I say it is me, the living God, who is the way of truth and light, mercy and hope and peace provided for those who believe upon me. Therefore I say be thankful to be guided in my way. That is the humility way of repentance, revolution each day. Destruction comes because God said so. And why is it coming? It's because we are a rebellious, we are a reprobate, we are a hypocritical, sinful, slimy, sleazy nation that stops the word God and we don't mean it. We don't love the Lord at all. We love ourselves. We love our money. We love our material. We love our mechanisms. But we don't love God. We only say we do, but in reality and in practice we don't. We don't worship Him. The church don't worship Him. The state or the family. They don't worship God the way God deserves to be worshipped. It's only lip service and not heart service. And that's why more destruction is coming. What if what I'm about to tell you makes you question what is what? What if I propose a what if scenario? What if I take up precious time in your busy life, just spinning you in a soul telling spiral with meaningless double talk? But at the same time, what if I kept you distracted with flashy graphics? Would you notice? Or for that matter, would you care? You're too busy listening to some guy in a tie and sleep.